I teach classes in anthropology and I do research mainly on the diets of humans and human relatives. I also do some field work uh, searching for fossil apes. I was planning to be doing that uh, this summer in France with uh, French collaborators and some Rutgers students uh, who would have been part of a uh, Rutgers study abroad program. Uh, the plan is we're going to go ahead and do that next summer. The uh, first thing that I, I want to say is uh, if anyone has any questions, please reach out. My email is robertsc at scarletmail.ruckers.edu. Uh, I, we can set up a video conference. Uh, I like talking to students about their future and I'm happy to answer any questions that anyone has. Before I talk more about anthropology uh, department, uh, I should offer a few words about what anthropology majors often do after graduation. The answer is that they use the skills that we teach, writing, analysis, research, cultural competency. Uh, these are all valued in the business world, in law, in medicine, and in government. Uh, anthropology can lead to uh, advanced degrees uh, in medicine, in law, uh, or, or policy. Uh, anthropologists go on to careers in pretty much everything. But the chart here uh, shows some careers that are more common for anthropology majors compared to other majors. These include uh, medical careers, social science research, and careers that require writing skills. I have former students that do genetics, uh, that work for the FBI, uh, do forensic science, uh, curate memes, work in museums, do nautical archeology, span uh, work for a medical devices firm, or our nurses or doctors or work to make new public policies. Next, what is anthropology? It's the study of people and that is a tall order. Uh, anthropologists study our biology, languages, cultures, past and present. What makes us human? Do you want to know how we got to be the way we are? or why we say the things the way we do, or how culture shapes us. Do you like digging in the dirt for clues about the past or just talking to people? If any of these sound interesting, then you have a good reason to take an anthropology class. But like I said, anthropology is a tall order uh, because anything to do with people is fair game for us. Uh, Thus, we tend to specialize into biological anthropologists, cultural anthropologists, linguistic anthropologists, and archaeologists. But we also have to think holistically. And at our very best, we integrate the insights from our culture with understanding our biology. Anthropology has never been more important than it is now. We are living a worldwide pandemic and everything is upside down. Uh, but anthropology has given me a tool to understand our times. Uh, the disease that is COVID-19 is about a virus, a host, and the culture and society that host is a part of. The host is you and I, people, homo sapiens. The virus is this bit of RNA packed in protein, and it gains access to us by way of a bit of our uh, biology, the host cell receptor called ACE2. I have a former student and a, a Rutgers PhD, uh, Dr. Marika Yaniak. Uh, she's an anthropologist. Um, she's also now part of the research group that just showed that our ACE2 receptor is similar to that of gorillas, chimpanzees, orangutans, baboons. This is important information um, because it tells us that many endangered primates are at risk from the novel coronavirus. Uh, so my uh, colleague in the anthropology department, Professor Aaron Vogel, who does work with orangutans in Borneo, um, this matters to her and she, uh, because her, her, her study animals, orangutans, are at risk. Uh, she teaches a lot of our uh, primatology classes in the department, and every other year uh, she takes students to her site, Tuanan in Borneo, 
um, as part of a Rutgers field school. Um, field schools and field opportunities are very important to us in the Department of Anthropology. This is something we try to make available to students. Uh, Professor Ryan Palumbit is also a primatologist and he studies baboons in Kenya. Uh, he also runs a field school every other year in Kenya. Uh, and uh, he teaches our course, uh, Life of Primates, uh, which is in the Natural Science Corps uh, and is all about the incredible primate diversity that is out there. Uh, Professor Vogel, Professor Palumbit, uh, Pro Professor Susan Cashel, who's an expert in primate evolution and much more, and I, we're all biological anthropologists at Rutgers. What do DNA, skeletons, and orangutans have in common? As biological anthropologists, we study all of them. If you've ever wondered what your bones can tell you about your past or what you can learn from watching wild baboons, uh, we have those courses covered. This fall, 2020, uh, Professor Cashel can get you started with Anthropology 102, Introduction to Human Evolution. But evolutionary anthropology is more than bones, uh, DNA, and primates. Uh, Professor Lee Kronk focuses on evolutionary theory and human behavior. He teaches the very popular Anthropology 201, Evolution and Human Behavior. When and why do people cooperate? That is an important question, and Professor Kronk has a great deal to say about it. One of um, my uh, favorite uh, pithy quotes uh, is that uh, fish are born expecting water and humans are born expecting culture. That means the biological part of what makes us human is never enough. Take our present moment. A host is a human with culture. How culture and society interact matter. What happens next will be because of biology and culture. Think about the culture of wearing or not wearing masks. This is something a cultural anthropologist might study. How does COVID-19 affect immigrants in the US differently than uh, non-immigrants? Again, ask a cultural anthropologist. Rutgers faculty cover a lot of ground. Uh, Professor Omer uh, Duachi teaches medical anthropology. Uh, Professor Bridget Purcell is offering a new and timely uh, course on debt. Uh, Professor Gassam Fashandi is teaching a class on xenophobia. To get started in cultural anthropology in fall 20, the place to start is with Anthro 101, Culture and Social Life, taught by Professor David Hughes, whose recent work is on climate change and people. People also use language. As a biological anthropologist and paleoanthropologist, I wonder when language arose. My colleagues, Professor Becky Schulteis and Professor Kate Riley, are my source for how language is used. And this field is so rich. What does language do? It is way more than a means of communication that allows us to give directions to the local library. Linguistic anthropology is about understanding social and political issues, and how signals influence people as social and political actors. These signals include sounds, written forms, gestures, gaze, bodily comportment, and the use of objects in diverse contexts. Around my linguistic anthropology colleagues, I always feel like I am around people who know what is really going on. Cytokines are these cell signaling molecules and are part of the human immune response. Linguistic anthropologists study language and the signals that deliver human, social, and cultural response to crises like a pandemic or catastrophic global warming. Uh, this fall of 2020, Professor Schulteis teaches Anthro 108, Language, Culture, and Society. And this is the place to begin if your interest is in language. Professor Schulteis also runs the Fez Ethnographic Field School in Morocco, um, which we hope will run um, this next summer. Again, field work is important to us in anthropology, and it's something that we want to make available to our students. Today, I'm sheltering in place. Uh, I study diet and food, so I'm interested in food, and 
Uh, I've been doing a lot of cooking at home. Uh, I've also been lucky to be able to order food, uh, not from Amazon or any place like that, uh, but from other places that I didn't really know about before. Uh, and so I've been thinking a lot about the supply chain. Uh, I've been thinking a lot about commerce and trade. Uh, and I've been thinking about conversations I've had with archaeologists like Professor Hilke de Young, uh, who's in our department, who studies uh, salt and trade. Uh, or conversations I've had with uh, Professor Dan Cabanis, who heads up our new archaeology minor. Archaeologists approach big questions like the origin of agriculture or, uh, much earlier, the first controlled use of fire. Uh, Professor Carmel Schreer, uh, she teaches our historical archaeology class, uh, which will be offered in the fall. And uh, Professor Cabanis teaches uh, Anthropology 112, World Prehistory, uh, which is the place to start if you are interested in our new archaeology minor. Finally, if you want to take a course that fills SAS core curriculum requirements and takes on every subfield in anthropology, uh, a course that tries to make sense of living in the 2020s uh, and to try and understand the current chapter uh, of the history of our species, Homo sapiens, then you should join Professor Hughes and I, who will be co-teaching Anthropology 111, Extinction. We will learn about the mother of all extinction events at the end of the Permian 252 million years ago, and work our way forward to now and our possible futures. We will contemplate pandemics, climate change, and artificial intelligence. That's pretty much all I have, uh, except to say what I said before. I'm serious. If anyone has a question, uh, send me an email. Um, this is one of my favorite slides. If you want to send me an email and tell me what you think you see here and what it might mean, um, that would be great. Thanks for uh, taking a little bit of time to learn about uh, anthropology.